Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be starting episode 9 in our series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Detour Modding, and we're going to be talking about both models and particles. Um, now, there are two reasons we're going to be grouping them together for this episode, uh, one being that they are a little more limited compared to some of the other file types and edits uh, that we can do in Diablo 2 Resurrected, um, so there frankly just won't be quite as much to go over, as many options. Um, and two, uh, they do function quite similar, similarly um, with how textures are embedded and, and things like that. Um, so again, if you are liking this content, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, helps both of us kind of understand what you're interested in. Um, and with all that out of the way, let's roll right into it. Uh, so starting with models, um, one of the first things we need to understand is that we are limited, right now at least, uh, because all models are referenced in this kind of model LOD desk bin file. Um, so let me just pull that up here. It's in the HD folder, and we can see that here. Um, now there is kind of like a JSON version of it, um, but I don't know the true purpose of this JSON. Um, as you can see from the file sizes, it really kind of loads everything from the bin. Um, and at least from the limited tests I've done, um, this JSON doesn't seem to kind of impact anything one way or the other. Um, but just know that, uh, again, all model files in the game are kind of referenced um, in this bin file, um, so it can basically decide uh, what LOD files to use and stuff like that. We'll discuss that in just a second. Um, but that means that if you're trying to use a model that's not in this bin, um, that the game is just going to crash when it goes to load it um, because it more or less doesn't know what to do um, with the, the model. Um, because it's not referenced, you're just, you're out of luck. Um, so there are some workarounds I'll show you um, after we go over these basics um, so that we can still add some models uh, without kind of directly, you know, piss, pissing off the .bin file. Um, but we'll discuss that in just a minute here. Um, as far as textures, uh, they are referenced inside the model file itself. Um, so pretending that you're going to clone a monster, maybe Diablo or something, uh, and you want to give this new clone a completely different look from Diablo by editing all the textures, um, you're going to need to edit the reference inside that model file, or it's always going to look um, at the original clone's texture location. Um, so obviously if your clone was named Diablo New, um, it's still looking in the original Diablo folder for all the textures. Um, so you're gonna need to update that. Uh, I do have a program to help with that, um, and there are some other scripts and stuff to assist. Um, and then you need to understand that models have LODs or level of detail versions. Um, so if I go ahead and pull up, uh, we'll just pull up Diablo since we're already talking about it. Um, so here we go. Um, if we pull that up, we can see that the torso, which is kind of the main model that all the other ones will kind of attach onto, um, there's four level of details, zero through three, with zero always being your kind of best quality model. Um, it does this for more or less performance reasons. Um, so a good example might be to use item models um, as the example. Um, you're going to see the LOD zero version of that sword or that armor, whatever, um, on the character selection screen or that kind of main menu screen um, where you're real up close uh, camera wise to the character. Um, and then once you load in game, it's going to switch to, you know, LOD one to three, just kind of depending on your graphic settings and stuff like that. Um, so when you are making changes, um, you very well are going to likely need to change it for multiple models um, so that they all get the, you know, update. Um, and then moving on to particles now, um, very similarly to textures, or I'm sorry, to models, the textures are referenced inside the particle itself. Um, this can become more important uh, because there are several particles that can share the same texture. Where unlike monsters, where they all kind of all have their own texture, you might find that a fire bolt and, I don't know, blaze uh, use the same kind of fire texture to give them that fire color. Um, so when you want to give your skill a custom visual and you want to change, you know, your, your red fire to blue fire or something like that, um, you might need to clone your own particle and change the reference inside that particle 
or else you'll be editing the texture for possibly more than one um, you know, particle or just the original and you don't wanna do that either. Um, unlike models, um, particles do not completely rely on textures for their coloring aspects. Um, so if we uh, you know, remove the textures from a model, it would be just kind of gray with, with no color whatsoever. Um, with particles, um, there are still some glow effects, some engine lighting kind of effects um, that the particle has baked in. Um, at least as of you know, the recording of this video, we don't have a way to change those effects within the particle yet. Um, so those are kind of off limits. Um, the good news is, is that there's quite a few, if not the majority, of the edits are done with textures, so this won't be um, as big of an issue, um, but I'm sure there will be times where there's certain visual effects or certain parts that um, you won't be able to edit yet due to this. Um, and then the kind of last thing we need to understand about models, or sorry, part <laughs> particles, um, is that models can be embedded inside them. Um, so a good example of this might be something like Molten Boulder from Druid. Um, so the actual boulder that gets summoned from the particle um, is a model. Um, and that model has its own textures, um, you know, just like an item or a character or something. Um, so it may be that even though you're trying to, um, you know, change this particle color or something, that you're actually going to need to edit another model texture that's just embedded inside the particle. Um, so there, again, you just may run into instances like this, um, although most particles are just the actual particle. Um, so now that we've kind of broken down the basics, let's open up some programs, put some of this into context, and I'll show you that workaround for the bin um, so that you can get uh, you know, some new models added to the game. Um, so the workaround for that, we can thank Blizzard's um, basically neglect, if you will. Um, so if we go to our HD folder, environment for ENV, model, we can see this test folder. Um, we are very thankful for this test folder. Um, and the reason for that is, is if we go in here, we can see there's a whole bunch of test models, um, including some in the subfolders, um, and then some of the subfolders have subfolders, etc. cetera. Um, so there's quite a bit of models in here um, that were essentially used during testing, production, whatever, um, and for whichever reasons got left um, in the game. The reason this is great for us is that because they were used for testing, these are all located in the bin file. Um, so they're unused now, um, but we can use them for our own purposes by essentially just repurposing them as, you know, cloned models or newly edited models, whatever. Um, so an example might be, again, we're trying to clone Diablo, uh, make him like a new boss with different textures and all this kind of stuff. Well, we can use, uh, basically, you can just kind of pick a model that's unused um, and reference that uh, inside the JSON file uh, as your new Diablo model. Um, and again, because it's in the bin, uh, this doesn't violate any of the rules and it will kind of load in game no problem. Um, so obviously you are limited to the maximum number of kind of custom models you can add into the game, um, but there are a few kind of other scattered locations where you can find some unused models um, and you can kind of repurpose those as well. Um, as far as showing off the textures, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Noesis. Um, so again, if you haven't checked out the video description, we always have a link to our website, which does include all the uh, utilities and uh, resources we use in the videos. Um, but what we're going to do is show how these kind of textures are loaded um, inside a, an enemy. So if we load up this Diablo folder, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, load or let Noesis load the torso model here. And what we'll see is that when it loads, it's already textured. Um, so this is a more or less how it's going to look in game. Um, it has all the, you know, proper, whoops, uh, you know, texture for the model. Um, and that's all located within the subfolder uh, textures, which again contains all the actual textures. So um, as we showed in our kind of textures video, um, you can export these out, edit them, uh, do what you need as far as that goes, um, but it's auto-loading these textures from this folder. Um, the reason, is, again, this is important is I'm going to rename this folder so that 
that kind of breaks Noesis on auto-loading those textures for us. And now when I go back to the Diablo folder and I reload my torso, um, you should see that it comes up basically all gray. There is no texture information um, because the model itself does not have any textures attached to it. They're all pooled from this um, specific folder. And if I go into this, I'm gonna go one step further here. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste this model and I'm gonna rename it to .gr2. Um, so a dot model is just a dot gr2. They are the same thing, um, just kind of renamed. Um, and once I do that, I can use one of our other programs uh, that I just released. We're gonna call it MoPa for now, uh, for model cool and particle helper. Um, in this pack, you will see grtviewer.exe. Um, this program we can use to open our models and kind of use some uh, advanced information about them. So I'm just gonna close it and open it directly because I already have it kind of linked to it. Um, but when we do that, we can see that this is the actual model um, for Diablo. And you can see it might look really jacked up. Um, some models are just like this. Um, and frankly, it's just how they do it. I'm not a 3D guy, couldn't tell you why, don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, the important thing for our purposes in this video is if we go over here to the texture list, um, we can see all the textures that the model uses um, as well as where it's told to pull that texture from. Um, so when I go to clone my texture or my uh, model and give it new textures, if I don't come in here and change this, and, and again, this MoPop program will e change that, um, and there's some scripts that'll let you do it too. It's not the only way. Um, but it, we need to come in here and give it our new folder name for you know, Diablo New or whatever, we rename the textures, et cetera. Um, but that is how kind of everything is loaded. Um, so again, just be mindful that it doesn't matter um, if you've cloned the model or not, it's still gonna look in the original uh, location for those textures because it's embedded directly in it. Um, and then obviously it's clear to see that uh, the level of details, um, you know, each of them is going to have a kind of different level of detail. So you can see that one looks a little, you know, less uh, defined than uh, your LOD zero here. Um, again, just understand that as you're editing textures, you're going to need to uh, edit several of them depending on your goals. Um, particles are going to be largely the same way, but I will go ahead and pull up MOPA now so we can see um, how some of that works. Um, so I'm just going here, pull up MOPA, um, and I'll just go to the particle section, and let's go ahead and load a particle so we can see how this works. Um, I've already extracted one as I was kind of making the program and testing things out, um, but I'm just going to pull up um, essentially the particle like Armageddon or Molten Boulder or such is going to use. Um, and pull that up. So as soon as I load it, um, the program is gonna tell us all the textures that that particle is using. Um, it's also gonna show us all the models that particle might be using. And then finally, it's gonna show you any textures that are most likely to be the ones you wanna edit for coloring purposes and stuff. Um, so in this case, there's really only one good match it found. Um, most of them are gonna be kind of in the gradients folder, so that's primarily where it's gonna look. Um, but if we go in here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up this folder in Noesis. Um, so again, we can see that, uh, you know, the location of almost all textures are gonna be HD VFX textures. And then again, for color purposes, you're primarily gonna be looking in gradient folder. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up this um, texture in Noesis. So let's just do that real quick. HD, VFX, textures, gradients. And if we look, it was, I already forgot the name, TFX, red, yellow. So let's go to TFX, red, yellow. And if we double click that, that's it. That's our gradient. So it's just this little strip of color here. Um, and this is what gives the um, particle its color information. Um, so we can, uh, just like a texture, a normal texture, export this, change it to, a, you know, a blue or something, um, and replace all that um, so that now it's a, a kind of a blue gradient. Um, and so all you're going to need to do is kind of decide what you want to name your new particle, select what particle that you want to uh, rename, 
because um, again, we're having to kind of replace the internal reference in the file. Um, so we want to um, replace this red yellow gradient with a custom one. Um, for now, they need to be the same length. So you can see the buttons grayed out because the my new uh, file path does not match the length of the original. So what I recommend usually um, is if we copy and paste this um, and we just change gradient to like a new folder name, maybe like something like custom TX for custom texture. Um, now this is going to replace the location of the texture with this new location, which will allow us to, um, again, separate it from the original or other particles that use that texture, um, but still allow us to edit the color. And because the length still matches, um, we can go ahead and replace it now. Um, another thing you might want to do um, is maybe you want to copy and paste, you know, leave everything, the location, etc. But maybe you just want to change the T to a one or something. Um, and then, you know, help keep track of it that way. Uh, in the future, we probably will be able to um, make it anything without worrying about path length. Uh, but just due to my own kind of lack of knowledge, this is all I was able to come up with for now. Um, and I'm sure some smarter individuals will help expand upon that in time. Um, but that's essentially the breakdown um, of both models and particles. Um, some of the options that will be available for replacing them, for converting them, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, at least for now, this is as far as we're going to go into it. Um, in future videos, um, when we go into like um, the specific edit tutorials, um, when we actually will be replacing a model with new textures and all this stuff, um, obviously we'll, we'll go into it much more detail then. Um, and you might, you know, uh, learn what you want at that point. Uh, but as far as this goes, um, we just wanted to show you how the textures work, how they're embedded, um, some of the workarounds for, like, for example, the bin and model files, things like that. Um, so I hope you guys have found use in the video, and thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, have a great day, and take care. Bye.